Okay, so we're going to dive into PowerPoint Chapter 3 practice exam. And um, my expectations are that you would have watched and gone through the demo webcast first before attempting this practice exam. And also, that you're watching this after you've actually taken the practice exam and you're only using this for specific help on specific questions. It's really easy with distance learning to kind of shortcut and go, I'm just going to watch Mr. Rudin's video and oh yeah, I got it, I'm good. Um, you need to go through this repetition of learning to really gain mastery on what you're working on. All right, so we're going to go through the 26 questions here in the PowerPoint Chapter 3 demo. All right, and here we go. Yeah, I'm just going to go through these sequentially here as we move along here. And we're waiting for question one. Drum roll, please. And here comes question one, I think. Taking a while to load. Be patient. It'll come. Yes. Hmm, well, that took a while. So, on slide three, enter the following data into the chart. 10 for the quarter, third quarter sales and 15 for the fourth quarter sales. So, again, we have this Excel-like um, worksheet. And I'm just going to double-click in that cell and hit 10 for third quarter. Double-click in the last cell and hit 15 for fourth quarter. It's going to update my chart as I go along. Hit enter, and boom, we're done to number one. Question two, apply the sty style eight chart style to the chart on slide three. I need to go down and select my chart, go to my chart tool design tab, and here are my pre-formatted chart styles, and I'm going to select chart style number eight, that dark version. Again, um, stuff, that, stuff that's already formatted for us. Let's have a different look there, okay. On slide three, insert a table with three columns and six rows. All right, we're talking about using the placeholder down here. I'm going to say insert table, and I'm just simply going to say three columns and six rows, very much like what we did in Word way back when in creating a table in Word. So a three by six table. All right. Um, remove the top border from the top row of the table and then format the bottom border of the top row the solid border and six point line weight. I really struggled with this one. I must admit, I struggled a lot with this one. First of all, I'm going to drag through, left click and hold, drag through my top row of my table. Okay. Then we're going to go to the table tools design tab. Now the first thing we need to do is clear that top border. So we're going to say, oh, over here in Draw Borders, I'm going to say, no border. All right. But I want to make sure I specify where I want no border. And the drop-down arrow over here next to Borders, I'm going to say Top Border. That's where I want no border. All right, that's cleared. Okay. Now we say, okay, now I want a bottom border with solid border and six-point line weight. So we need to start creating what kind of a border we want over here. So I want a solid border, that'd be the next one down here. A solid border, and pretty thick, drop down arrow, six point weight. Now we need to tell PowerPoint where do we want that border, and drop down arrow next to borders. I want, him at, want it as a bottom border for that top row that I have selected. That's one thick border there, people. All right. Question five. On the table on slide three, insert a row above the row containing the phrase better resale value. So I'm going to click on better resale value, that second row, get my insertion point in there. And in layout, I'm going to say insert above my current position. Insert a row above there. Insert a text box the text new workshop to the left of the picture. Insert. Over here in text, I'm going to select text box. Click anywhere to the left of 
the picture on slide two. I'm going to type in new workshop and just click off somewhere. Okay, we use the wall light decor workshop snapshot slide for the PB, PPTX file as the new slide four in the current presentation. Now what I need to do here to make sure it goes in the right place, I want to go down and click on slide three and then for new slide up here I'm going to say reuse slides browse out find that presentation PB open it up now it's the last slide down here wall light decor that I want to add to my current presentation so we're taking a slide from a different presentation and essentially copying it into our current presentation so I'm going to right click and say let's insert this slide in particular not all the slides, just this one. In slide sorter view, move slide four so it becomes the new slide three. So we need to switch down in our workspace. Right now we're in normal view. I need to switch to slide sorter view, like so. And here's my slide four, left click and hold. I'm going to drag it so it's to the left of the current slide 3 and it becomes the new slide 3. There you go. Okay, crop the bottom of the image on slide 3 to just beneath the bottom of the sink base. Okay, let's just wait for this to load here. So I'm going to go down and find my picture and I need to scroll down a little bit to see my whole picture here. So in my Picture Tools Format tab, for Size and Crop, I click on the crop up there and I get handles all the way around my picture. I'm going to get my bottom handle, get that T down there, that crop handle, left click and hold, drag up to right underneath the sink base like so, let up. Okay, so we've cropped it. We need to go back to size and turn cropping off by clicking on the crop button again. There, we sliced that picture down to size, didn't we? Apply the sharpen 50% corrections option to the picture on slide three. All right, so I'm gonna click on my picture, the tools format tab, and corrections. It says I'm using the last option in the sharpen and soften gallery which is sharpened 50%. That's really sharp. Apply the drop shadow rectangle picture style to the picture on slide 3. So again, I'm clicking on the picture, picture tools format tab, and the picture styles up here. I'm selecting the fourth option, which is drop shadow rectangle. Now, ordinarily, it probably would show me more than what it's showing up there now. That's like bad graphics there. But that's my pre-formatted style up there. On slide one, insert new word art using the text precision builders in the gradient fill word art style, gray word art style. So I'm going to come up here to insert and over here for text, I'm going to select word art. I'm going to select this second row, first column, gradient fill gray drop in that in and my text is going to be precision builders okay apply the transform text effect triangle down to the word art precision builders I need to select my word art okay drawing tools format tab and it says we're going for a text effect so we're going to go to transform in the get this out of the way here in the warp section uh, whoops I just lost it there and we're looking for triangle down and it's blinking at me that says curve up uh, the fourth column the first row of the fourth column oh here we go fourth column first row, that's up here, sorry about that, I got lost, I went to 
fourth column in the first row. Okay, there we go. I got it. Triangle down. Took me a while. Okay. Um, on slide one, change the style to workshop word art. Click on that word art. And we're going to go up here. And we're just changing our mind on our word art. And we're going to click on our more button down here. And we're going to select this dark red fill accent color three sharp bevel. Hmm, that transforms that text really fast. On slide two, convert the text budget to word art. Word art. Now I'm just going to just make sure I select this, okay? And in my drawing tools format tab, same deal. I'm taking existing conventional text and making it into word art. And I'm going to select this guy here, which is the uh, gradient fill gold accent color five reflection word art. That guy right there. Click on that. Boom. A little reflection there. Okay. Apply the entrance animation wheel to the picture on slide two. Select the picture. Animations. Uh, more. And wheel. There you can see the preview of that transition there. The animation effect. Apply the entrance animation wipe to the content placeholder. That would be this text down here. All right. Animations. And we're looking for a more button. And we're looking for wipe. There's wipe right there. Now it's going to go through and show us what that particular animation is going to look like. There you go. Okay, next we have change the direction of the animation applied to the picture on slide two to two spokes. Select the picture and we're going to go to animations and we're going to change the effect options and we're going to say two spokes. So it's going to be a little bit different animation. It's going to get previewed there. There you go. Change the animation start option for the picture on slide two to after previous. So again, we're selecting the picture and we're going to go up to animations. And over here on start, instead of on click, we're going to select after previous. So it'll run whatever runs first. Which looks like the title's going to run first. I don't know. It's not going to let us see the preview on that one. Increase the duration of the animation applied to the picture on slide 2 to 2.25 seconds. Click on the picture. Back to animations again. And you can see we have a duration of 2 seconds for that animation to take effect. Up arrow to 2.25. There you go. A little bit longer, teeny bit. Change the volume of the video on slide 3 to high. Click on the video. And then playback, you're going to go over here to volume and select high. Insert the PB movie, MOV movie video, excuse me, from the default folder in slide three. So here we're going to just bring it right in here. Insert over here on the far right media and video on my PC. And there's my PB movie. I can select that and insert it into my slide. On slide three, insert a clustered column chart in the content placeholder. Okay. So here's our content placeholder. We're going to click on the insert chart option there for content placeholder. And there's my clustered column chart. I'm just going to double click on that and drop in the chart. And we're done with that question. Okay, format the video on slide three to start automatically. Click on your video and video tools playback. And up here you're going to say instead of when clicked on for start, you want to change it to automatically. Most videos you have embedded in the PowerPoint presentation will be automatically. There's some fun stuff you can get into with videos. Let me tell you. Run the slideshow from the beginning. 
I can do, now ordinarily I could hit F5, but it doesn't like that. Um, I can go to Slideshow Starter up here in my Quick Access Toolbar. I have Start from Beginning. I'm just going to click on that. And it's going to take me to Slide 1. And it's going to show Slide 1. Then Slide 2. There's my presentation. Then Slide 3. I sound like the count on Sesame Street. I, I, I love to count slides. I am the count and I love to count. You guys probably don't even remember that. You don't even know what I'm talking about. Apply the snip diagonal corner gradient style to the video on slide 3. So I'm going to select the video. Video tools format tab. And we have these video styles up here. I'm going to click on more. Seventh option in the moderates. Moderate snip diagonal corner gradient is a particular style applying to that video. And there you have it. And I'm done. And I think I got a perfect score. Did I not? Yes, I got 26 out of 26. And again, you're using this as a resource to review the questions you were struggling with on the practice exam you've already completed. Don't cheat and try to watch this first, okay? All right, thank you for watching, and have a great evening.